Hey, welcome back to Trading Matters, a podcast by OCBC Securities. In this show, we're focused on hunting down interesting market movements to help you become more opportunistic with your capital. I'm your host, Reggie, aka your chief financial coconut, and today we're gonna <laughs> move away from all the usual macro updates, line, you know, like stock deep dives, uh, and all those kind of things, which I know you tune in every week for. Those are important, important things because we are financial podcasts. But, you know, since it's four years once, we're, we're going to seed that today to pass it to FIFA. So we're going to talk about the FIFA World Cup effect. How does it affect the markets? Does it affect liquidity? Does traders, do traders take a holiday because of these things? How's it going to change the whole market? So today we shall dedicate the episode to FIFA. So have, have a good time you know, and you will be surprised that some of these things actually affect the markets. So welcome back to Trading Matters. Okay, welcome back CK. Very happy to have you back in studio and today we have something really, really fun to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but before before all of that, right? Okay, uh, give us the appetizer. Like, we take on some of the. I mean, we are financial podcast, right? <laughs> we yep, we yep. have some we have some basic things that we need to complete. <laughs> yeah, we, we have some basic things that we need to complete, right? Like recently, Fed adjustments, China. So these macro news, right? Bring us through, okay? Quick, ah, uh, quick, ah. Uh, today the focus is on the later part, right? So simple, <laughs> quick things. What is happening? What is interesting? The, the serious stuff first. Well, I guess in the global markets, the big news <laughs> is all about the US Fed. So you are right. There's some news over there. Because they just had their meeting. So they, I mean, pretty much the markets were not surprised when it comes to the interest rate hikes in terms of what was already planned for this round's meeting. So a triple hike or 75 basis point hike that was already expected by the markets. And that was what was delivered by the US Federal Reserve. We won't go too much into detail about that today. Although some of the key highlights from the meeting is really that Jerome Powell is opening the door, you could say, to changes in the magnitude of the hikes for future meetings. So he said, you know, there's a possibility that they might scale down and everyone was a little bit excited about that. Instead of 75 basis points, they were like possibly 50 basis points in December. That's what the markets expect. Uh, but that's not quite the pivot that everyone's looking for as well because that's just slowing down the rate hikes. And the other big news from that area is that actually Jerome Powell did come out as a little bit hawkish or a little bit more focused on inflation than the markets might like because he actually came out to say that it's not about how fast you hike sometimes, it's about where you reach at the end of the day. The final uh, destination of the US Federal Reserve, he was anticipating it to be higher than what the markets were anticipating. So as a result of that, we saw some choppy trading in the US uh, US markets at first rallied because they were like, oh, you know, we might not see a 75 basis point hike in December. And then after that, Jerome Powell came out and said what he said. And markets were like, oh, no, then maybe they'll hike longer than we anticipated into 2023 as well. Yeah. So very US Federal sentiment. Reserve. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very sentiment reserve. Uh, sentiment driven, right? At this point in time, there's... Everyone's trying to figure out what's happening, right? And and on the other side of the world, you know, other than the US, right? The other side of the world, the very big market of China has also had some news, also had some interesting things. The market's also moving, right? So, uh, I mean, we've been saying this for a long time, right? The market, I much like every week we come in, the market is crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> every week the volatility is high. So what actually happened, you know, in China and uh, what, what are we looking at? Why is the market so choppy here too? Yeah, so like what you mentioned, you know, if the US markets are sentiment driven, the Chinese markets are also very, very sentiment driven. Maybe even more week. sentiment driven. Maybe yeah, even yeah. more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And we have seen that price action in even the Chinese stocks listed in the US, the ADRs as well. Yeah. Uh, the big news in the Chinese side of the stock markets is that there has been a rumor going around unverified social media posts saying <laughs> cannot that cannot trust you know, uh, cannot trust rumor cannot yeah, trust <laughs> it, it's completely uh, unverifiable in fact the authorities mm. actually came out to say they have heard mm. of no such thing but there was a social media post going out saying that China was looking at creating a reopening committee uh, as a result of some other rumors saying that you know they are exploring vaccinations that are inhaled and so there's a widespread vaccination drive that could be in the works 
the Chinese stocks actually rallied in Hong Kong as well as in the US. So a lot of sentiment, it kind of shows you the market mood for Hong Kong and for Chinese firms uh, that are listed in the US. But uh, the mood is really, there's so much anticipation for this reopening drive that yeah. even on a rumor, they're willing to actually buy the rumor. And now the question is, again, we have seen this rumor fade away over the past three, four times this year when there was no reopening and no pivot away from COVID-0. Uh, will that happen this round? That's the big question on everyone's minds now as well for China. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, okay. I get it, man. Like, it's, it's so crazy, right? A small little bit of rumor can drive the markets. So for, for our listeners tuning in, right? Like, what should they then focus on? Right? Because at this point in time, it's extremely sentiment. Things are just moving for all sorts of reasons. So how should our listeners kind of observe the markets uh, in, in this few, maybe let's say this few months going forward? Well, it really depends on what you want to do or what kind of trader or investor you are. You know, for those of us who are maybe a little bit more into trading, a little bit more into the short-term volatility, then such volatility could be to your benefit. On the other hand, those of us who are maybe a little bit longer term in terms of our investment horizon, then we might want to ignore the noises. We might not want to jump at any particular rumor rather than chase it. So it depends on what kind of investor or trader you really are when it comes to dealing with such a sentiment-driven, volatile market, both in the US as well as in China as well yeah okay so that's all the important financial news out of the way <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna talk about the the mainstay for today right when when ck told me hey let's talk about this i was like really yeah and he sent me the, the stuff I was like oh yeah it's very very interesting but we got the most <laughs> important thing that happened every four years and that will be fifa world cup Woo! Yeah, football season. Yeah, yeah, football season. All your traders will go on holidays, right? So, <laughs> so the market is in a mess. But yeah, I think I think CK wanted to bring this up today to talk a little bit about how FIFA then affects the markets, right? Which is which is quite interesting. So I am going to give you the stage, man, to talk a little bit about how this whole like World Cup thing is going to affect the markets. You know, is there something interesting that our listeners should think about? Is there an opportunity somewhere, or how is it going to do? You know, in general, given such a situation at this point in time. Yeah, and I mean, I think it was pretty surprising when I was reading up about it as well. Uh, when doing a little bit of research and, and reading up, it's interesting how a com uh, uh, an event or a competition like the FIFA World Cup can actually have an impact on the stock market. And spoiler alert, it does actually. There has been real impact that has been studied and mm -hmm. it's not just a study by myself or anything like that. It's actually by, there were two economists that are affiliated to the ECB or European Central Bank. There are some of the universities out there that have done studies and that study actually shows that there has been an impact on the stock market in two areas in particular. One in terms of liquidity or volumes, uh, the other area is actually in terms of price action, in terms of whether or not your stock index actually goes up or down. And that is related to the results of the FIFA World Cup as well. Yeah, so a bit of introduction. Those of us who don't know, probably everyone knows, but those of us who don't know, the you know, FIFA World Cup happens every four years mm. and it's actually a competition across 32 different countries. Uh, what's interesting is in terms of the viewership. So That's in terms crazy. of viewership, uh, we are at, like there have been some uh, surveys done and some uh, some are expecting actually the viewership for this round's 2022 FIFA World Cup to hit 5 billion viewers at some point in time across the one month long competition. Yeah, so 5 billion, the viewership is crazy. And as a result mm. of such a big viewership or such a big influence globally, mm. we see some of the impact trickle down to the stock market as well. Yeah. And pretty interesting that this year's World Cup is also held in November, December as a result of the host country. So uh, traditionally, it's held during the summer period, uh, but because of climate and temperature concerns, this year is being held in Qatar, it's being held in November to December. So about one month in November to December, traditionally also more of a holiday period for traders. And it's interesting to see what's the impact. When it comes to trading activity, what the historical studies show, when it comes to market liquidity, is that there's been a significant reduction of market mm -hmm. liquidity during World Cup season or during World Cup matches in particular. Yeah. So I think, I mean, in terms of statistics, like say the 2010 World Cup, right? The number of trades actually dropped by 45% wow. when a national team is playing. So for example, maybe in the UK, <laughs> okay. in the London Stock Exchange, when the English team is playing, 45% drop. That's huge, you know? Yeah. It's quite cute, right? It's quite cute, right? Yeah, it's like, it's like oh, okay, hey, England's playing. Oh, uh, stop your training there, right, guys. Let's go down and watch, watch together. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting, right? Mm, like, it is, uh, in it terms is, of the is. market dynamics. And we see that globally across many of the exchanges that are being studied as well. So not just something unique to the UK, mm. not something unique to maybe the, um, the European countries, but actually globally as well. That has been observed. But we actually see that phenomenon happening for professional traders, for the market makers as well. Yeah. Interesting. But Singaporean traders have to continue working. La. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so all you Singapore <laughs> traders, please continue working hard. Huh? Yeah, so, <laughs> so what about other than this, right? Other than how it affects the flows, you know, uh, does it affect price action, you know, potential returns? You know, is, is, it a, is it a situation where because of this, volatility will reduce because there's not as much activity in the space? Or, you know, how should we think about the, the other aspects of trading or investing? Well, actually, when it comes to volatility and liquidity, uh, you could say that potentially the flip side could happen because not so many trades are happening. Mm. Uh, those trades that do happen might move the market a little bit more. So we might see actually more volatility. Oh, yes. Okay, okay, okay. And in terms of price action, actually, it's pretty interesting what the statistics show as well. So, you know, some of the studies, they went out to study not just the World Cup, but some of the major international football tournaments. And what the studies actually show is that not all price action is rational. We kind of knew that before, right? You know, mm, some of the mm. sentiment-driven markets that we mentioned earlier. But when it comes to these studies, actually it shows that, for example, when a national team loses a football match, there's actually a negative impact to the stock index. And that is a significant impact that has been studied. And, you know, all the statistical studies, it is statistically significant as well mm. that the national stock index does suffer a loss as a result of that. So pretty interesting study and it kind of gives us an idea that, you know, as much as we want markets to be efficient, we want it to be rational, fundamentally driven and based on all the different metrics like your cash flows and like your PE ratios and things like that, not necessarily the case all of the time. And this is one example of when maybe emotions take over for certain traders in the market and it does have an impact as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely more than traders. It takes over the family, you know, which team you support, you know, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> so, so is there an opportunity somewhere, you know, when, when no, knowing this, okay, now that you've highlighted it to our listeners, you know, that you know that there's uh, probably more emotions that, that will be within the market, you know, during this whole World, World Cup period, right? Are there some things that we can think about, some things we can then strategize or, how, how can we go about, you know, being, now that we know this, to be like one up? Well, I think, I mean, of course, like I mentioned before, it really does depend on what kind of trader or investor yeah. you are. If you like volatility, then this could be an opportunity for you if there is indeed increased volatility in the markets. And again, you know, it's not about betting what side of the, like in terms of which teams win and things like that, but it's really taking advantage of certain conditions that are right before you. And this is the current market condition or, or we'll see how that turns out in mm -hmm. terms of the stock market volatility. When it comes to investing and trading as well, there is one other aspect that could be interesting to play off this entire World Cup theme, which is the aspect of hospitality, tourism, airlines. And these are companies that experience a very real increase or decrease in their earnings as a result of such a big event. So especially for the companies that are in the host country, in this case, it's Qatar, but also globally, we have you know companies that are so exposed to such a big tourist event. Companies such as your beer companies might experience fluctuations in sales. You have your advertising companies as well. Some of them are projecting Q4 profit. I believe one of the companies, Wavemaker, actually projects that a huge portion of its Q4 profit this year actually might be attributed to an event like the World Cup. And then we also have our social media companies and our streaming companies, both traditional as well as the new tech companies, right? So yeah. in Singapore, we have Singtel, Starhub, they are, you know, doing part of the broadcasting rights together at Mediacorp. But overseas as well, we have some of these uh, companies that might be impacted in terms of their advertising revenue. And these are real dollars and cents that are attributed to an event like the World Cup as well. So like your Facebook, like your Twitter, and even companies that are like Meituan, you know, doing food deliveries. Actually, there has a uh, there's been a oh, statistic, yeah. you know, that, that shows like, you know, the orders placed in the app actually jump about 40% before the first yeah. match in 2018. Nice, yeah, so nice, food nice. delivery companies, advertising companies, oh. social media companies, all of them hit in some way or another by mm. such a big event, watched by half the world's population, you know. Yeah. Uh, pretty interesting opportunities out there that can be taken advantage of, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Nice! Thank you for highlighting this whole like FIFA thing and how it changes <laughs> the dynamics. I mean, I never thought of it that way. 
way. I mean, it's like, just gonna like cheer lah. But amazing how some people went so far as to study how it correlates or like how does it affect the market and all these other things on the side. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. So any last things you want to add, you know, other than saying which team you cheer for, if not, we will get a revolution here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I think, um, you know, we talked about market liquidity. This is something that's quite technical and it's something that's very relevant to traders. I just want to put out there as well that, you know, with so many uncertainties in the market, right? So we have other events like the Fed that you mentioned, a little bit more boring maybe, mm. but we also have things like the US midterm elections, we have the ongoing tensions geopolitically, Russia, Ukraine, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, US. So when it comes to volatility, when it comes to liquidity, then that's where the market is right now. And when it comes to how to take advantage of that, then the traders really have to keep their eyes peeled, be nimble, continue to watch where things are headed. And I mean, we might see, for example, some of the tech stocks that we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. they might get a boost in Q4, but the World Cup happens once every four years, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. whether or not this boost can continue or can last, we might see it also reverting back to the broader macro picture that we discussed at the end of the day, which is all about inflation and recession and things like that. And this is just a blip, you could say, in the bigger picture once every four years as well. Yeah. Nice. Just like this piece of content is just a blip also. <laughs> <laughs> We're only doing one episode of FIFA. No more FIFA coverage. Huh? I mean, it happens <laughs> once every four years. <laughs> once every four years. Let's give it one episode, okay? Yes, and then uh, we'll revert back to some of these macro <laughs> discussions. Hopefully, our listeners will continue to join us. Uh, don't just tune in for FIFA, okay? Right. So, so we'll, <laughs> we'll continue to double down on some of these other things, which, which like you said, there are a lot of other developments, you know, uh, that's going on, whether it's macro, micro, you know, geopolitics, all these things, you know, we'll keep covering on Trading Matters. So yeah. Thank you, CK. Thank you all of you for tuning in every week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey, thank you for tuning in weekly with us at Trading Matters, a podcast by OCBC Securities. If you want to be even faster in following latest market insights done by the team at OCBC Securities, you should visit iocbc.com slash trading matters for market insights on Singapore, China, Hong Kong, and the US, and a lot of the stuff that we couldn't cover on the show today. This show is jointly produced by the team at The Financial Coconut and OCBC Securities. We hope you become a more astute trader following our weekly show. And we want to hear from you. Join our ecosystem, events, and all that stuff. Details in the description below. I will see you next week.